Hey everybody, Lonnie here. So we're on part seven now, and we're gonna be talking about the PyWeb API, and we're gonna go into how we wrap that within our own API and make those calls. If you, um, if you remember, when we were talking about uh, the beginning of the project and the architecture, we've kind of done this part here, uh, a lot of this, we've done views and controllers in our client side. Now we're gonna be working on our server side. And so this is all stuff that'll be running um, on the server and using the um, the web, a web API, Pi Web API technology. And that's how we're gonna get data from our Pi system. Uh, looking at this other uh, representation of our application here, we have our, our client components and we're gonna be working on this web server with the Pi Web API uh, 2 router and controller that's part of ASP.NET Microsoft stuff. And then over here in the Pi system, we're gonna be using that Pi Web API calls to go to AF, which will also eventually end up in the data archive to retrieve information. Okay, so let's go ahead and come back over to Visual Studio and add in that controller. So here, um, um, we're gonna be moving outside of our, of our application folder here. We're gonna be working on the server side and to add in a, um, a, con an, a web API controller, we just go here to controllers and we go um, add and we want to add a controller and we want to pick the, uh, web API, the web API 2 controller empty. And let's add that and I'm going to call this KPI and that's going to be a convention. This controller is telling us that this is actually going to be a controller for an API. Um, we'll go ahead and add that. Now, once we do that, we, we have a very simple class here and we don't have any, any methods or anything in there. We just have this, this KPI controller and it, it's inheriting from this API controller. So I wanna do one thing. I wanna do a little bit of uh, changing the configuration as far as how our router is set up for the, um, for the um, API controller. Here's how our router is normally set up. We're using the API, the controller name, and then we're sending it a value. And I want to change that around a little bit, and I want to set it up to where we're we're doing more method calls. Then uh, this is more like a rest a rest call where you would you would do these um, these different slash 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 um, when we're setting up URLs. I want to just do uh, something that's kind of a little little simpler than that, and I'll show you what that change looks like. It's very simple. Uh, we'll just paste that in here. And all I'm changing it is I'm, I'm, I'm changing it to this action API and I'm doing the controller um, and then the action, which is going to be like get KPI and then we're going to send it um, an ID. So we're, we're getting rid of this API and we're just sending the controller called KPI. So that's what I'm going to use instead of this. And um, we'll go ahead and just comment that out and, uh, and we'll just leave, leave, it, leave it this way for now. And, um, and then I will come over to our controller. And so what I wanna do is I wanna mock up uh, just a, a method here that we can test to make sure our, um, our, uh, our controller is working correctly. So I'm gonna call this, uh, we're gonna go ahead and string, we'll call this uh, get KPIs and, um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, just, we'll just return, um, return, um, just return a KPI value, okay? Just return something. And when we make this call to the, with the controller, we should be able to, we should see this come back as a method. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a breakpoint in here and we'll run this and see if this actually works for us. So, So here's our here's our client application running. But if we're going to make a call to the API, the, K, the API, I'm going to go KPI, and I'm going to go get KPIs. And um, if I do that, then you can see it found get KPIs because we're calling KPI, and then um, and then it should return. I'll go ahead and press F5, and it should return that value. And here you can see that it returned um, this as uh, XML. Okay, so. So we've got uh, so we've we've got um, we've got our uh, our our call here working correctly. So let's go ahead and now um, get some real some have this do something like go get the, go get some data from the um, using the Pi Web API. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna okay. So um, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just bring in some code that will. Uh, 
that will um, make our call to the to the um, API, the the uh, PyWave API. So here, um, still the same method call, but now we're going to do asynchronous call because this this call will actually take a while. So we don't want the client to be waiting on on the return. So this will um, this will continue to plug away, and then when it gets the results, it'll send them back to the client as, as an asynchronous call. Now I have uh, the first thing that I, I'm using is the HTTP um, client, which is part of um, .NET Framework, and we're just setting up a new client handler. And I did want to point out one thing is um, there is a uh, I have left some code in here, commented out to talk about how to do authentication and how to do basic authentication. So if you set up your PyWeb API for basic authentication, then you can uncomment these two lines of code and you can go in and put in your username and password here and then that will allow that authentication to work. Um, and that's, that's just, uh, that's uh, something that um, you'll probably want to do in most situations is set a basic authentication. And typically what I do is this, uh, this will run as a service account essentially. And so the, the server will be um, authenticating itself with a PyWeb API using those credentials. And, um, and, then, um, and then in here, we're just uh, we're going through and there's a call here where I have it. I have this here, so to ignore invalid certificates, um, if the PyWeb API URL is not um, is not uh, is not cert certified, um, which in this case it's not because it's just a test environment. And then we have this. Um, and then I have set up my URL, and this is actually my test call to the PyWeb API. And I'll go ahead. I'm going to copy copy this and show you what I'm doing here. If you're not really familiar with uh, the PyWeb API, I'll go ahead and this is my server um, IP address that I have and then this is the PyWeb API. I have that installed on this server. So when I make this call, I'm getting these links and the way the PyWeb API essentially works is, is you just, you, you're navigating by links. And so whenever you make calls, you're getting back data. So if I come over here and I look at my asset servers here, I can see that I have um, I have uh, 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 an AF server, and then I can look at the databases within the AF server, and I can see that I have a configuration database, and then I have this uh, mining company database, and this is the one that I'm actually using. And then within this database, if I want to look at um, what are my elements, I can go in here and I can take a look at elements that exist within that. And I can see I have a single element here, element one, and then um, you know what uh, uh, within those, what are my um, attributes for that element? I can take a look at that, and I can see that I have a few attributes. I have this uh, attribute that I don't have named. Uh, here's an element one. Here's a CDT one fifty eight, and within that, I can look at okay for this. This I can go ahead and I, if I want to look at um, plot data, which would be something I want to use for for trending. I could I could click on this link, and I'm actually getting back data. Um, you can see timestamps and values are coming back, and the and the and so these are these are um, real these are values that are coming from the Pi server. So by by using this um, this link here, I can build it up. And if you see at the very end, it has the word plot, and then it has this long um, um, hexadecimally thing. That's this is a web this is the web ID. And the web ID is uh, up here. Every um, every item in the PyWeb API gets a web ID assigned to it, and so we use these web IDs to um, to do various calls. So this is the same web ID, and we're just building it up. Py Web API streams the web ID, and then beyond that, we have here. plot. And um, and if I go back to Visual Studio, you can see that we have. Um, the same thing, PyWeb API streams that web ID, and then at the very end I have plots. So that's how I'm bringing in the data. So I'm setting up that URL, and then I'm just using the uh, HTTP client here, and I'm, and I'm making that request using that URL. And so it'll go out, when if the content comes back su uh, not successful, then I'm returning an error message, but otherwise, um, I'm taking and I'm parsing that uh, the content here, which is this. This is what's coming back. I'm parsing that, and I'm using um, 
the built-in uh, .NET framework stuff to um, make that into a JSON package. So I'm making JSON objects out of it, and I'm going to create that, uh, create an array out of it. And then, and then essentially what I'm just going through here is I'm going to iterate through each item in that array, and I'm looking for values that are good. Um, if it's good, then I, um, and then, then I add, uh, I'm creating this data pair based off of the value and the timestamp and, and this object, creating a JSON object here, uh, data pairs, uh, configure that, and then I'm adding it to this results, which is a new, which is this new JSON array here. So I'm just creating this new, new array, iterating through and building these uh, objects. So then I'll have these uh, value and timestamp, which if those match perfectly against my data set that I already have, my test data set that I have um, on the client side. So I'm essentially getting this ready just to plug right into my chart. Um, that's the way that I like to work. And then, um, and then I'm returning that result. So if we if we make this call now, if we come back to our, if we start this up, and we go back to our uh, browser, and we come in here and we make, uh, we'll make. Uh, actually, I want to make. Uh, I want to come here and I want to make that call, which was uh, KPI, and we'll go ahead and call it get KPIs. And now you can see we actually get that object is coming back here. And you can see now it's JSON and we've got timestamps and values and it's just uh, repeating over and over. And, um, and then this is what we're going to use to do our, to do our chart. So that, um, that gets the, uh, the API going. So the last thing that we need to do is just connect that into our chart. And that will be done on the next part. All right, so hopefully you're able to follow that, uh, follow follow along pretty well on that. Um, it's not too too difficult, but this is where we're we're bringing in the PyWave API. And if you remember, the reason that I'm doing this is because a lot of times you're going to be making multiple calls here and collecting data and maybe doing some server side uh, manipulation like we're doing here. We're not passing back all the data. We're actually trying to get it set up, and we're doing some uh, some some. Uh, some formatting and things like that, and you can call other data sources. And then up here, the authentication that takes care of our authentication headaches because now we're authenticating at the server level to the back to the PyWeb API. Now you still may have clients authenticating, um, but that's a whole client thing, authenticating against the server. And once the server says, yeah, you're good, then it can go ahead and decide when it wants to make that call. And that's kind of how I like to separate it out. Um, I've, I've tried to do it directly um, in the past in, in real life applications, directly calling the PyWave API from the, from the client side. And it turns, turns out to be um, pretty, pretty um, fragile is a word I would like to use. It can be done, but unless it's a super, super simple application or you don't need authentication at all, then it really doesn't make, uh, uh, really doesn't work out too well. So anyway, we'll, um, We'll get going, finish this application up on the next part. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope that this has been beneficial and you can see how all this is coming together. We're gonna to get that data service set up on our client side and then we'll map this to our um, to our chart and then we'll be pretty much where I wanted to be for this, uh, for this project. All right, my name's Lonnie, thanks for watching. Talk to you later, bye-bye.